Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rustic Wife. I'm Alana. So it's the first week of December and I am itching to get some Christmas cookies made. Uh, the first one that I'm going to do today is an almond spritz cookie. And I got this cookbook from a thrift store a few years ago and it's really fabulous. Uh, it's called Rose's Christmas Cookies by Rose Levy Berenbaum. And um, she's got a really simple recipe for an almond spritz cookie. So uh, I've made these for a few years since I got the book and they're excellent. And like I said, really simple to make. So here are the spritz cookies right here from um, this cookie book. And I'm gonna be using a cookie press today, but if you don't have one, you can just use a pastry um, piping bag with, with whatever tip you want. Um, anyway, it calls for blanched almonds. I just have the whole almonds with the skins on them and I just use that. I don't bother popping the skins off. Uh, if you want pure white or beige-ish or that color of a cookie, you may want to take the skins off, but I don't mind little flecks of skin in the cookies. Um, anyway, you're going to need some granulated sugar, butter, an egg, pure almond extract and vanilla extract all-purpose flour and a bit of salt. So I like to drizzle chocolate on mine or put some glassy cherries on them. Um, you can even just sprinkle icing sugar. So those are the optional ingredients for these too. Okay, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to roast these almonds. And again, the recipe calls for them blanched, but I don't feel like blanching them and taking the skins off. If you wanted to, you could just plunge them into boiling water and then cold water and then the skins will just slip right off, but I don't wanna do that. So um, I'm just gonna take a half a cup of these almonds and I'm going to roast them in a 375 degree oven for about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna let them cool completely and then I'm going to put them in my food processor along with the sugar and then grind them into um, fine-ish powder anyway. So I'm gonna get these roasted and then I'm gonna put the rest of my ingredients together. So that calls for a half a cup. Let's put these in the oven. I'm gonna set the timer so I don't forget about them because that's something that I would do. Okay, when I make Christmas cookies, I actually like to use a kitchen scale. You can pick these up at a hardware store or this came from Canadian Tire. I think it was on sale for $6 or something like that. But it's really, really handy. Um, sometimes when I make shortbread, I actually have too much flour when I use the dip and sweep method. Even though I've dipped it in with a spoon and then leveled it off with a knife, sometimes it's too much and then my shortbread are too crumbly or too tough. I don't, I don't like that. So um, I'm going to be using my kitchen scale, but I will leave the recipe below and that'll give you the uh, measurements in cups, ounces, and in grams. So um, for this, I'm going to be doing mine in grams. So I need three quarters of a cup of sugar or 150 grams of granulated sugar. So next we're gonna do the flour. Remember when you're weighing, you also want to take the weight of your bowl off too. So you wanna do um, a tear. So we want two cups of all purpose flour, but I really like to weigh this out. So that's gonna be 285 grams. Okay, next we're gonna weigh our butter. And we need one cup or 227 grams. Now I'm using salted butter. The recipe calls for unsalted, but I just won't add the pinch of salt that it, the recipe calls for. So there we go, we have 227 grams of butter and I'm going to soften that a little bit. Okay, remember when I said that it would be like me to make the almonds too dark. I, I did, I could actually smell them kind of burning. So um, I'm gonna have to do this again. <laughs> so maybe not 10 minutes. So I'll set the timer for about six minutes and watch them carefully. And probably because the skins are on, they darkened up quicker. So I should have adjusted the time, but I didn't. Okay, let's try this again. So I'm gonna put, it, put them in for about five or six minutes. And I'm still gonna eat these, I don't wanna waste them, but I just don't wanna put them in with my cookies in case they're kinda of bitter. And the recipe calls for one egg as well. So we have sugar, flour, butter, 
vanilla, um, almond extract, one egg, and my almonds are roasting. Okay, my almonds are completely cool now, so I'm going to put them in my food processor along with the sugar to grind them up. Um, if you don't have a food processor, you can just use a blender to grind up your almonds, or it would be a pain in the arse, but you could uh, grate them, I suppose, if you didn't have anything else, or I don't know, pestle and mortar maybe, or maybe just buy uh, ground almonds, that might be easier. So let's get those ground up and then I'm going to put the rest of the ingredients in here just to make it easy. Okay, that consistency is pretty good. You can see the little flecks of the almond skins in there, but that's okay. Okay, I'm just going to add the butter. Just cut it up in, just cut it up into chunks and just make it a little bit easier to blend in with the other ingredients. So I've got the butter incorporated in there nicely. I'm gonna add the egg and then the flavorings. There's the vanilla. Again, that was one teaspoon of each. I'm just gonna give this Use a spatula for that. Okay, now I'm going to add the flour. I'm just going to put all of it in at once. And then we'll pulse it so it doesn't get overworked. nice consistency and I'll be able to push this dough out through my um, cookie press. Okay I have my oven preset to 375 and I'm going to use my cookie press. I got this from I think it was oh, Value Village for five bucks. I doubt if those would be the prices now at Value Village because it's a little expensive there now but you never know. So you might find a cookie press. This one's made in Italy never used a cookie press before. Kind of looks like one of those old-fashioned cake piping tubes and it comes with different plates um, which will be different designs so it's really cool and you can actually use this to ice a cake so it comes with little um, nozzles for that. So on the back of the box it shows you what design each plate will make so um, I'm gonna do some of these I think. So I'm going to put my first plate on, comes with a collar there, just put it on the tube. And then I want to fill um, the tube with the dough and then I'll just put that in there and press the cookies out. So for these ones, I've just got some glassy cherries that I cut in half. And we'll put some on these cookies and then I'll sprinkle them with icing sugar. So I just took my last batch out of the oven. They were in there for probably about nine minutes per batch at 375 and um, it made just over four dozen cookies. Okay, I've got the cookies all done here and I'm just going to sprinkle some powdered sugar over top and then I'm going to do some chocolate on these ones here. These cookies aren't super, super sweet, so that's why it's nice to have um, some powdered sugar over top of them. And of course, chocolate always makes everything better. I have the cookies dusted with powdered sugar, and then I'm going to melt some um, milk chocolate chips in a cup in the microwave. Um, I always add a tablespoon or half a tablespoon of um, shortening to my chocolate while it's melting because it kind of makes it glossy. Um, if you don't have a microwave, you can just use a double boiler to melt your chocolate on the stove top. And for this, I just eyeball it, maybe about a cup of chocolate chips. And that's probably about, that's probably about a half a tablespoon of shortening. Put that in the cup. So I just put that on for about 35 seconds. I don't want them to completely melt. I want them to look like they've, they're holding 
the shape and then as I stir it, it'll melt because I don't want it to burn the chocolate because that is really bitter. So that was about 50 seconds. I added a few more seconds there to melt it and that should be perfect. It's kind of, yeah, it's nice and smooth now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this melted chocolate into a Ziploc bag and cut a tiny corner from the bottom and then I can just squiggle the chocolate on top of the cookies. Let's put the bag over a mug and then I can pour the chocolate into the bag. It's going to snip a tiny little corner off. So there are the cookies and like I said there's about four and a half dozen I think four or four and a half dozen cookies and they will last in the freezer for a couple of months. So thanks a lot for coming along with me as I started my Christmas baking. It doesn't seem very Christmassy outside today. I think it's December 4th today and it's green out there. It's fairly warm. It feels like a spring day but hopefully with this baking and eating these cookies I'll start to get in the spirit a little bit more. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please consider subscribing, and I'm going to see you again next time.